Virgo, welcome to your in-depth reading for yours and theirs. Just so we're all on the same page, let's go over about this reading type and what you can expect from it. So yours and theirs is a reading type between yourself and someone else. That being said, it does not have to be about a significant other spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, lover type situation and whoever fits the bill in that dynamic as I'm describing it. So do keep in mind, it could be about a family member or friend. So take it resonates, leave it does not, reverse those energies as you see fit, more so with yours and theirs as energy exchange and interchange is real rapid and fluid. These are, after all, general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate at all. And as frustrating as it is, it's also very, very common. It's a collective reading. What are you going to do? Check your other placements. That's what you're going to do. You might find yourself in there somewhere. Yeah? Now, yours specifically, there might be a break point in your message um, that I anticipate at this time as I'm actually recording on the day of the total solar eclipse. As you might have seen, if you compare it to, say, some of the fire signs, it's already starting to darken in here. <laughs> and uh, I do want to try to capture some of it, rain or no, I don't care. Um, that's not the point. That's not the point. I still want to be a witness to it. There shan't be another one like it for some time, and even then, it will not be within um, my viewing part of the world, if you will. <laughs> so, anyway, yes, I read yours, literally at the height of it, or you're about to, and uh, Taurus is about the hour before, so. It shows. I'm seeing some concentrated energy, for sure. That's one of the reasons why I insisted on reading today. What's going on, please? Show me Virgo in their person. Show me Virgo in their person. Show me Virgo in their person. Show me Virgo and their person. There we go. We're going to start with your side of the board, but as I said in the intro, reverse those energies as you see fit. What's going on, please, for Virgo? Page of Swords, little guy, the moon, nine of cups. We're having a really hard time accessing our true self because it's under the moon currently. Page of Swords, little guy. He can only handle so much, and he cannot compete with the moon. He really can't. A little bit of insight. You're showing me a secret, and that's okay. It's hard for you to acknowledge that secret because it goes to a deep place of wants and desire, wish fulfillment specifically with the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups, we must understand, is wish fulfillment based on the premise that you understand you love yourself enough to make your wishes come true. That means you have to have a healthy identity of self, and that by that I mean you know you love yourself. Okay? You know what it is that would make you happy, and that it wouldn't be anywhere near the moon. Okay? So you have a secret, a one that would make you very happy, and you try not to think about it too much. Okay? Six of Cups. Oh, I just felt the, I just felt that reflexive sigh. Oh. Six of Cups, the Knights of Swords, the Three of Pentacles. They would like to take action towards you, even if it was in the fr frame of friendship. I don't know what the conditions are. I just know that they're there. Uh, so the Six of Cups is a soul bond, and we know this person. They're unique. They're of the past. That's the best word you can use to describe that kind of connection. It's unique. It feels different because it is. It's impactful for that reason. You're more likely to remember it, change, or shape around a Six of Cups than, say, a standard friendship. Um, and it could very well be a friend at face value or, with the Knight of Swords there, willing to take action. Perhaps clean slate energy, going back to basics, trying to rediscover basic building block structures to see if something's still there that's salvageable. I don't know. We'll see. Bare minimum, it suggests cooperative work, even if it's in the smallest of ways. Not so small that it's invisible, but something. Uh, seven of Swords, Eight of Cups, Six of Swords, Queen of Swords on the opening. I think you're really defaulting to rationality here. Um, you... So this is supposed to be shared until it's not shared, until somebody shows me singular energy. Right now you're showing me I can't. Not because you actually believe that, but because you're telling yourself. And that's something in tarot I often tell people to look out for. If you're in a position where you have to talk yourself into or out of something, it's usually not correct. Right now you're saying I can't get emotionally connected to this. It's just not feasible, and that's what you're telling yourself um, as a reason for now to stay away and Six of Swords to try to permanently bolster yourself into staying away. So this is definitely the mind taking over and telling itself whatever it needs to tell itself in order to justify the action. So there's, again, this is not a judgment, guys. I read cards. This is what I do. Okay? It's not a judgment. I just want to understand. 
I can feed it back to you and let you know. That way you can understand right away if it resonates with you or not. And if it does, help you understand what the heck's going on so you don't feel so weird or crazy or you think you're out of your mind. No. No. Uh, human motivation, thinking, justification, emotionality, it's all real. Okay? And the more we know, so much the better, and we can hopefully avoid things like this in the future where you ever feel like you have to shy away from something, not get confrontational with it. You can't be confrontational with yourself. I want to avoid it. Maybe next time, if there is ever next time with any kind of similar situation or person, we can hopefully do the opposite of that. Because I don't want you to feel like that. I don't want you to feel like you're in a position of having to avoid something when it's not what you want to do. Okay? You're telling yourself a kind of a little white lie here that this doesn't mean anything to me, therefore leave it alone. And six of swords that just move on from it. If that had worked... What you really wanted wouldn't be under the moon. Okay, so let's start with your queen. Oh, I know, I know that mental part of you. That's that's at the making decisions. Mm. Let me tell you what's what, right? <laughs> Saying that to you, Virgo, we're going to, we say what's up around here. And we can rationalize and, and be logical with anything if it helps, you know. Um, all right, let's do it. Let's talk about that queen of swords, please. Show me that queen of swords. Justice, I know. Like I said, we can do anything to justify it. That doesn't mean it feels correct, because it's not. When you are still conflicted over a so-called decision, then it's not really fair. It just is justified, because you told yourself. Big difference there. All cards have pros and cons. Justice can be used against us as well. I told myself this, therefore it's fair. Then why are we still stressed about it? Because it doesn't fit. That's how you know a decision's correct or not. Okay, because we told ourselves it was fair, not that it actually is fair. Mm -hmm. Let's see that Queen of Swords, some of that Queen of Swords. Strength, oh, four of pentacles, the five of cups. Yeah, you, you, you hate it. You hate the fact that you feel that you've held on to this. I, you know? Guys, what can I say? You, you hate the fact that you've held on to this as long as you have. You don't know how to let it go, and you get mad at yourself. And you're like, if I was just firmer, if my mind was just stronger. I know, that's what everybody says. If my mind was just stronger, if I was more logical, if I was more rational, this wouldn't be a problem. Uh, this, you know, and then we get mad at ourselves all over again. Then we double down on the thought and we're like, I just need to have a stronger mind. That's it. Mind over matter, Christina. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Again, if that would work, you wouldn't have to keep pulling yourself aside and giving yourself a pep talk and be like, Virgo, get your shit together. Right. If that worked. If it worked, I wouldn't be saying this, this, this. This circle of repetition for you. I know you think it's a matter of strength and will. It's not. If you really want to know how to let something go, then you heal yourself towards it. You don't be mean to yourself. You don't beat yourself up for it. That suggests you have a lack of empathy and sympathy and insight to your own situation, that you just need to be harder on yourself. That just doesn't work. I wish it did. But when has it ever? It doesn't. Don't get me wrong, some people thrive on discipline, mental discipline. Um, but uh, that's not everybody. And I, eventually those folks who are really mastering that skill of mental discipline, they'll feel the extent of that choice later. Because again, they weren't really trying to concern the feelings. And I, I get why. I get why you tell yourself it's, it's a, you don't want to feel the pain. But that's it. We still hold on to it. We feel the sense of pain, loss, rejection, disappointment, regret, sorrow, loss. The one that got away, five of cups, is any of those things, all those things. Remorse, sadness, guilt, anything. It didn't work at the emotional level. And we hold on to this. And I know that you turn around and be like, stronger, it'll go away. That doesn't help. So let's go along for you and see how maybe... 
we could actually help you. Page of Swords, we're going to go ahead and skip that for now. If I have more questions, I'll get back to it. But he's a little guy. I get it. Lack of insight over our, our kind of deeper secret here. Let's see that moon. A couple more minutes. Let's We'll go ahead and clear your line, and that's when I'll take the break, and then we'll come back, okay? Some of that moon, please. Some of the moon. Some of the moon. Some of that moon, please. Some of the moon. Eight of Pentacles, the Knights of Cups, the Ace of Wands. You're gonna, you're gonna freaking Virgo, I don't need this. Not from you. Not today. Not today. Not you. Not you. Not you, Virgo. Not you. Not you. And your secret is that you you really wanna Eight of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, the Ace of Wands. That's your, your secret. It's, I have to tell you, it's the most honest, beautiful, raw secret I've ever seen. I would love to express myself to this and work through it with whomever they are and um, feel that way again, feel passionate and alive and f have reason to hope from my heart. I would love to work through it realistically, Eight of Pentacles. Really put my authentic feeling and self and expression in there, my passion to all of it, Christina. I want to use my special words. I want to have that strong, special feeling, and I, I want it to show up in reality, too. That's my secret. I want to express, I want to throw my love and passion all over this. That's my secret. That's my big secret. Are you satisfied? Yeah. This is where you are one person, unified in truth. This is where you are fragmented. This is your authentic self. That's under the moon. And it's a beautiful authentic self. As I'm saying, not not today, not you. <laughs> today I can't take that level of sincerity from anybody right now. I just can't. <laughs> from a water sign, sure. Uh, from Virgo who said, this is my secret. There. Thank you for being honest. You would love to just throw yourself all into this heart, passion, and drive that point home with the Eight of Pentacles. That way there's no confusion. I don't express myself and throw my passion all over that. Get all up in there, but beautifully, softly. Softly spoken with sincerity. That's you. That's your, that's your big secret. Let's see, that's... Uh, and what you told yourself what it is you have to do to quote unquote get over it. it does not match up with your authentic self at all. What you do and what you feel, two different things. And this is where humans often get caught in the crosshairs of misgivings and self-doubt and hurting themselves. Well, we'll get to reasons why. You have your reasons. I know. We all do. And you've told yourself your reasons many, many times. We'll get to that. Nine of Cups. The moon. Bouncing off each other. The world. Eight of Swords. You're telling yourself it's over. There's no way. I, I, I know what you've told yourself a thousand times, darling. I know. You're saying you're not emotionally invested in this. That's a lie. Uh, you're saying that it never meant much to you. That's also not correct. You're saying it's not a secret. Yes, it is. You you literally openly contradicted yourself. That's how comfortable you've gotten with denying your truth. Not because you're a bad person. Not because you're a bad person. Because it was easier. It was easier than the truth. It's easier to say this meant nothing to me than to feel that it did. I know. On that note, we're going to break right here. 
and we will get back to the subject of you after the eclipse. Half the totality was something else. Granted, it was heavy, heavy um, overhead clouds, but still was able to see something. And then it went dark, 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 like it would have been at 9 p.m. Oh, wow. It was something that was very inspirational. Oh, my goodness. That sun was eclipsed by the moon, indeed. I managed to get some of it, something, not too much, but uh, I felt it. Oh, I felt it. Your reading was supposed to happen this day, this time. Yeah, and the, speaking of the moon crossing, getting back to you, you know? Your, your moon's out, at least that I can see. There's the secrets you keep, and... And the secrets you keep even to yourself, I just, uh... Your moon's here twice. One has your authentic self, and the other one is what you tell yourself. Hopefully that world is going to claim its swords. I cannot see. I cannot see. And uh, when we stop doing this, hopefully you can access that part of you that's there. It's right there. Your beautiful self is right there. Let's see. Uh, let's see what this person's packing, eh? Let's see if they're worth all this fuss. Well, for you they are. Let's see that six of cups, please. Show me that six of cups. Show me that six of cups, please. Show me that six of cups. Show me that six of cups, please. Okay. Ah, the moon, oh, the nine of pentacles, the lovers. They have a moon too, except for them, it's not a secret. It's just something they keep quiet. They're very aware of it. So that's a conscious decision. Uh, you know, they pretty much ID'd you as my lover, my moon. You know, they understand that there's the soul bond here and they credit you a great deal with that sense of influence you influence them a great deal so this is a known connection to them they don't deny the influence of you okay they said that uh, they're being connected to you change them in many ways okay there is the recognition of self here they just kind of choose to keep quiet about you But they know of your existence very much, and they are very, I would even say, hyper aware of um, how you personally affected them. They have a strong sense of self, but they said that they kind of changed and discovered who they were because of you. They keep you in a quiet place, but not a quiet corner. There's a big, big concept here of self-discovery because of their connection to you. And on the surface, they said, yes, it was very precious to them, unique, still is. And they have a stronger understanding of who they are because of their connection to you. But they take that to a personal space, okay? My guess is that you would not know how much you influenced them. Uh, why would you? How could you even begin to guess or endeavor to guess that when you're over here and you won't kind of allow yourself to flow through that space of this is what I'd like to do and this is what I tell myself. How could you possibly know how you affected them? You really kind of enhance the landscape of who this person is. Whatever they were in terms of being strong-willed or independent, it's more so because of their connection to you. Okay. The lover's connection works both ways, guys. It's meant to make us rise into our higher self if we choose it, to choose to understand it, and that means understanding we love it, that it's impacted us a certain way, otherwise we cannot grow and change. Therefore, we don't deserve our lover, and therefore we remain disconnected from them. Okay. They said they understood how they changed because of you. 
<sighs> Let's see that Knight of Swords, please. Show me that Knight of Swords. Perhaps you help this person remember who they are or who they always kind of inspire themselves to be or they lost sight of. I don't know. I just know that they had a stronger sense of self-develop because of you. And that's what a lover's connection does. It's meant to challenge us to bring out our best and not try to suppress it by confusing our best with our worst. I really want you, this piece of you that's real, the thing that you're determined to keep the most secret, is some of your best material. Knight of Swords, some of that Knight of Swords. Six of Pentacles, the Two of Wands, the Star, they, they do hope one day to connect with you again. Whether or not that one day will ever happen, I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to know that you wanted this and how you feel towards it to do so. But they have the energy attached to them that says, it would mean a lot to me to balance with them again. And more than balance, Six of Pentacles, that's easy. Anybody can do that. But to look forward to this person, bare minimum, Two of Wands, Six of Pentacles, these are all very easy, easy things to achieve. Knight of Swords, too. But with the star attached to it, it's kind of like saying the greatness of the star brought down to realistic standards says, for one reason or another, whatever those reasons may be, I would really like to look forward to seeing you again. They say they'd take action towards that. They'd move towards that. No problem. Even if it was just to literally have the privilege of saying, I would like to look forward to seeing you again. It's very honest. It's very simple. See, again, we have that brilliance of the star, but the reality surrounding it. So they, they say they know how to balance with you, or at least they used to. And there's many things about that they looked forward to and they'd like to again, maybe one day, whatever that means. Let's see that three of pentacles. To get to know each other again as friends, cooperate for us. Try to rebuild something, possibly. Show that Three of Pentacles, please. Show that Three of Pentacles. You'd have to know you wanted that too, and that it would mean something to you as well to be influenced by it. And we'd have to let our walls down to understand that this affected us deeply. Ace of Swords, Seven of Cups, the King of Swords. Yeah, they'd just like to get to know you again. Maybe one day. You know, it's a little bit on the upfront, stoic, a little distant, not putting so much of their emotional, uh, emotional self into it at the upfront. Okay. It's, it's a very kind of gentle, I'm trying to leave my feelings out of it, if that's what you want. Um... If it just means getting to know you again, that would be good. But they're saying they can handle it. Because of you, they helped remember who the heck they are. So if they're saying that they can handle a little bit of connectivity with you, even if it was at friendship level, that they could handle that, it would just be nice to kind of see you again. And if you want to rework it from the ground up, Three of Pentacles, they're saying they're fine with that. Okay? It doesn't have to be anything more. You know, nothing too demanding or overbearing or having false expectations. Just kind of getting to know you again. I am saying it's not much, but if that's what you want, they could do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's keep on keeping on. Seven of Swords, Eight of Cups, and the Six of Swords. Terror does not dictate action. You do. Terror is the proof of choice, not the absence of it. Let's see that uh, Seven of Swords, please. Show me that Seven of Swords. Show me that Seven of Swords. Show me that Seven of Swords. 
Seven, seven Swords. Show me the Seven of Swords, please. Judgment, Two of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. It's your choice. It was always your choice. Of course it is. Judgment, decision. At the kind of imperative spiritual level. You know, whatever that means. And uh, Two of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. You get to choose. You get to invest in the love that's correct for you. That's a choice. You have to understand if that's the kind of love that's correct for you. I see it right here. According to your moon wishes, it actually very much is the love that's correct for you. But it's also your choice to lean out of it, Seven of Swords. We all have to use good judgment about what, quote unquote, the real deal is here with the Ace of Pentacles. And is this kind of love? We have to acknowledge that it's equal, and it always was. We feel it the same. In order to invest in a love like this, you have to know that you're in it too. The Seven of Swords says not yet, or not now, or possibly never. Which means it's a lesson. And the investment of love is it real and authentic? Can you see yourself in it? Can you embrace yourself in it? Or will it be something that you're always going to go like this towards? Talk yourself out of it. I want to see your reasons why Eight of Cups is here. We couldn't emotionally blast open towards this. We couldn't emotionally invest in it. I know people get sick of that word emotional, emotional, emotional. I know. And yet, that's up for discussion today. We invest in the love we think we're worth and that we can allow into our lives. I know you change this person. They look more realized. And when they say that they would love to look forward to you in future, even if it's just to check in, that they would be okay with that. That's someone who is secure with how you affected them. Let's see the Eight of Cups, please. Five of Wands, King of Pentacles, Six of Cups. There you are recognizing the soul bond and you, practically speaking, resisting emotional investment at every conceivable turn. You're saying it was the practical thing to do. It's not convenient to invest in that. Is that what you really believed? Otherwise, you wouldn't having to be forced. You wouldn't have to force the issue if you really believe that. Or is it because you think it's this union, this soul bond, this this love? Do you think it's a good representation of your worth? I think that's the real question, not about whether it's practical or convenient or too bad that didn't present itself ten years ago. What is that? If you had known then what you know now, what is that? What do you mean? I, I, I can't be getting into all that. There's too much moon energy here anyway. It would take two or three times as much work to kind of tease it out.
Is there another layer of opportunity behind this? One that predates your last interaction with this. A sense of knowing this person from before. Ten. Tw there's a reason that triggered my, and it stopped me, ten, twelve, fifteen years prior to this. Twenty years? We could have made that opportunity then, but we didn't. You didn't have it in you to invest then either. Somebody didn't. The soul bond is here too many times. The moon is here too many times. And that sense of regret, missed opportunity is here too many times. We had a decision here, a choice in that investment. Perhaps more than once with the same person. It was a reoccurring lesson. It was a reoccurring lesson for some of you with the same person. Why do you find this connection so challenging at the emotional level? Is that your biggest confrontation? The emotional investment far exceeding that which you have known in your reality is so different. <clears throat> it's a bit much. This is not a personal reading. I wouldn't be doing extended anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, some of you have a very rich history with this person. They represented a choice more than once on your timeline, perhaps. But it's stretched so far out. It, If you could, oh my God. Is that what that is? That mess. If you could go back and undo the decision and pick that person the first time. We can't think about that. Why can't you think about that? It hurts too much. <clears throat> it's like you're saying it's what what's done can't be undone. Uh, well, first of all, I disagree. Whatever can be done can be undone. It's usually by the same person who cast the spell or made the decision or planted the seed. Same idea. It goes back to the point of origin. Everything begins with the self. If it can be done by thy hand, it can be undone by thy hand. Um, it just depends on how much we allow our truths to come through and how much do we want it and therefore what are we willing to do for it. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, that had a, a bit of an effect on me, didn't it? <laughs> that solar eclipse, damn. Yes, yours was meant to be on this one. Six of Swords. Six of Swords. To answer your question, love is the uh, connection absolutely affected with you. If it hadn't done its job, it wouldn't have stayed with you. You allowing how it affected you to come through. Two different things. Okay. Again, I'm not casting judgment. Again, I'm not saying faults or anything like that. I want whatever this connection was supposed to do for you, help you realize or feel. That's what I want to come through for you. That way I can, you can say that it did its job fully and completely because I know that they experienced it. They said that they're better for it. That means you are too. But if you think it or treat it as something you have to ward off and I fucked up or I failed or I didn't know when to plant or I, I made the wrong call, the wrong investment, the wrong heart, I don't know. I don't know. 
then you're denying what's trying to come through. And I just, I see it so heavily for you. I see that six of swords, please. <clears throat> so six of swords, please. Page of swords. Three of swords. Four of cups. God dang it. You're just you're just you keep telling me the same thing. I'm just gonna do my best to leave the unhappiness behind. You need to ask yourself if that's good enough. If it weren't for the fact that I was impacted by this reading. I'd probably scrap this one because it doesn't, I don't see how it's supposed to help you. And the fact, the advice that I've given you. Be open, not closed off to how this impacted you. You're supposed to learn something from it, even if you never see them again. And at this rate, there's a good chance you won't, even though they distinctly remain open towards it. Okay. Um, even if you never see them again, you do yourself a disjustice. Do the opposite of that. Please. I don't know why I'm keeping this one by all rights. I should get rid of it. It doesn't seem to help. It's the only time I redo readings anymore is when I see something that's like, I have this big conflict in my life, but I can't or won't do anything about it because it's too difficult, too hard, or I can't get confrontation with myself. And I'm not saying that's a fault on your part. What I'm saying is... For Like it hurts you too much at the idea of what you had to give up or you couldn't get into. I don't want you to carry it around like a, a weight. It shouldn't be a weight. That person changed and they saw the impact of the nature upon themselves. When they say that they would just like to look forward to seeing you again under any premise that would you would feel good about, they'd be open to it, even if it meant being friends. I know you just want to leave the pain behind and the disappointment, but that comes back from your lack of insight. Let's go ahead and do that page of swords. Show me that page of swords, show me the page of swords. Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, the Empress. You feel like they would block you, but that's not backed up with anything substantial. That's straight up the Page of Swords. Uh, the Empress just wants to know that she is talking and or communicating with their equal. That's all. You're saying you know this person, that you feel confident they would block you, but it's being backed up twice by a nonsensical argument that is the Page of Swords. Very small insight. Again, that's more that confirmation of I'm telling myself what I need to tell myself in order to keep my distance from this. The Empress, I say it all the time, and the Emperor want their equal. They just want to know. Uh, you, you put them way up here. And maybe they deserve to be up there, but they've told me, however it is, I could work with Virgo, I would. Whatever would make Virgo comfortable. They miss their, their soul bond. They may not call you a soul mate anymore. And that's clearly by circumstance of the situation. But they could still call you friend and soul bond. <laughs> I think I just... You're saying they would block you. I think they just want to know that you're the equal. Everything you've told me in your own way, you could tell them. Like I said, the thing you're inclined to do least is usually the first thing you're supposed to do. You know. That... That would be enough for any empress or emperor. Okay. Yeah, uh, separation is in reverse. In other words, it's a choice. Um, it doesn't have to stay that way. Push and pull. 
and big success. Somebody's here is marked with big success, and it kind of adds to the dichotomy, the back and forth, the push and pull process. Um, I, I don't care if somebody's a big success. The authentic self is the authentic self. Okay. Karmic partner, possibly a fire sign. We have regrets about. There's that feeling I saw right there, somewhere in that mess, where it hit me. We've had lessons about investment in true love. And did we pick the wrong one? Some of you feel like you have regrets about a karmic partner. That's not the star of the show today. It's just not, sorry. Could be a fire sign, does not have to be, but it's here for some of you. We have regrets, and it feels more karmic than anything else. And uh, so it hits you in the form of a heart of what your true partner is versus what was chosen, and it's hard to, to look at that for some of you. Yeah, or it's them, but I, I, I have to say I do see them as being their own individual person. Um, and you're kind of like in other worlds and other choices, maybe. Okay. Oh, no. This one seems like a bummer, but given what experienced around it, the kind of forceful hit that I experienced, I'm going to go ahead and keep it. For those that need it. And that's my choice. Because I know better. And even while it may not make sense to me, it's called a good investment on it, my end, because whoever needs to see it is the one that needs to see it. Even if I personally have all the reason in the world to talk myself out of delivering this one, I still think there's a purpose in it. But that's my choice based on my own lessons about what constitutes a proper ace of pentacles in accordance to my work, feeling, circumstance. I'm not saying I'm going to get good feedback on it. No, no, I know better. <laughs> like I said, I have enough reason to talk myself out of this one, but nevertheless, I'm going to keep it for those who need it. Regardless, I hope it helps you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well.